welcome back to my channel so I'm doing a sit down video today because you guys seem to really enjoy the last one that I did so I'm doing another one I've been on a roll I've been posting my vlogs every day you guys wanted me to please watch them <laughs> please that'd be nice so I'm doing a sit down video today obviously you read the title um, having to do with the struggles of being an entrepreneur or a businesswoman or a YouTuber, social media influencer, which is um, all those things. Yeah, as the song said, I'm every woman and I'm literally every woman. So I think people have this misconception that it's so easy to be a YouTuber. All you have to do is film random stuff and poof, post it to the internet and you're getting paid. Um, there's a few more steps to it than that, okay? So um, everyone knows how I started on YouTube and how I got into the whole thing. And I was doing very well, like right off the bat. I was making money within the first month and I was gaining subscribers at a steady rate and it was just so fast paced. Like everything was like boom, 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 boom. And one thing I think that I wish, I wish that I could have built my YouTube channel, my social media, anything like that. I really kind of wish now that I built it from scratch. I think that there's something in the process of, you know, nurturing whatever it is you do, your craft or your talent, and just nurturing it from the ground up. And I think, you know, in that process, you're able to establish yourself as a person you're able to, you know, grow, not, I mean, yes. Okay, I'm trying to say you're able to grow and you can see your progression, like you can see your growth and you can understand it. And then for YouTube, you know, I can understand my viewers and my viewers will get a better sense of who I am on a pure, just Rochelle Clark level, you know? So. I do kind of wish that I had that opportunity, but I don't know why it happened the way it did. God knows why, right? But yeah, that's the way it happened for me. So the first like year and a half of YouTube, I think was pretty good. I felt like I was making, you know, really good um, money and, and my views were really good. I had consistent numbers and then somewhere along the line, I fell off. <laughs> I don't know where, but but I think life just does that to you in general, no matter what you're doing, you know? I just feel like there's a climax to everything. And at the top of a climax, after a climax, you go down. You know what I mean? That's the natural um, flow of life itself, you know? Yeah, for me, this is how I really feel. After a while, I kind of felt like, you know, when you're posting your videos and not a lot of people are watching your videos, right? And when you have a subscriber base that's not growing, which is, which was happening to me, it just makes you feel like unsure about everything you're doing. And you're feeling like, oh my God, like what can I do to fix this, you know? And so you try to think of ideas and then you watch all these other YouTube videos and they're doing so great. And they didn't do anything to get where they are now. And it's like, oh my God, like what do I have to do to get to where they are, you know what I mean? And then, you know, you keep posting and you feel like nothing's happening. You feel like you're not, you know, reaching that level and you just feel like you don't know what to do. And that is how I often feel, you know? And just as of late, literally like seven days ago, I started to feel like, you know what? I'm not gonna care about those things. I'm just gonna post my videos and whoever wants to watch it, watches it. Whoever doesn't wanna watch it, they don't have to watch it, you know? But it's just very easy to get in your own head and just lose confidence in what it is you're doing. And that is how I've been feeling for like on and off for like a year and a half. Like, you know, just feeling this feeling like, I don't know what it is I'm supposed to be doing. Like, should I be doing comedy sketches? You know, I'll do a comedy sketch. It doesn't do that well. And then I'm like, oh my God, no, I, I shouldn't do those. I'll go back to the vlogs. The vlogs are doing okay. And the other thing about being a vlogger that I felt pressured about, which I no longer feel as of last week, I kind of felt like I was boring, 
my god, yes. I felt like I was boring, even though I'm amazing now as of seven days ago. I kind of felt like, oh my gosh, I'm posting the same video every day. Wake up, you know, eat, maybe drive somewhere. I didn't have anything spectacular doing. And then I kind of felt looking at other YouTubers. I don't often, I just want to say one thing. I don't actually stalk other YouTubers to see what they're doing in comparison. I don't do that. But every so often you see a thumbnail, me and my baby in um, New Zealand or me and my family in Miami or wherever. Like it just seems really exciting. Like, oh my God, people are doing stuff. And I'm just here doing my regular routine. Like who wants to watch that? And you get into your own head about that. And that's how I started to feel. I was like, okay, um, who cares if I go to Walmart with Naomi and Jordan? You know what I mean? So that was one of the things that was holding me back from just going full throttle on this YouTube thing, you know? And the other thing about wanting to have started my YouTube journey in a more natural way, I would have been able to find my footing and kind of play around with different stuff. You know, I kind of feel like for some reason I had to choose skits or vlogging. And I kind of just chose vlogging because at the time it was easier to vlog. Like I didn't have to buy clothing or cameras or setup. I didn't have to buy lighting. I just had to walk around with my iPhone. So vlogging was easier and it was gratifying, like instantly gratifying. I received the reward right away, but I do wish that I had taken it slowly and stuck to what I was passionate about. And that is comedy. I'm just passionate about comedy and acting, like that type of stuff. But you know, I feel like I'm caught between a rock and a hard place because a lot of my viewers you guys watch because you like the vlogs. And then for me to kind of veer off into another lane and do something different, of course I'm a little bit concerned about how my subscribers are gonna to react to that, you know what I mean? But then at the same time, I'm closing myself off to possible opportunities to you know do what I wanna do, right? So it's a catch 22. Mm -hmm. And this is the other thing, me and Miss Rosh Posh, we're very good friends. We speak about this stuff every day. We talk about it every day. We're in similar situations. We both um, do everything ourselves. So we don't have a team, you know, we don't have um, a lighting person. We don't have an editor. We don't have someone to answer our emails all the time. We do that stuff ourselves. And so we're just saying, imagine how much further ahead we could be if we had an expert in all of these areas. If I had an expert lighter, lighting person, if I had an expert editor, if I had an expert person to answer my emails, right? So I feel, you know, well, this is how I feel. I don't want to speak for her, but in the grand scheme of things, it's like we're a jack of all trades, master at none, you know? And then it's like, you. I feel like, this is how I feel. I feel like, okay, well, where am I, okay, where am I gonna find someone I can trust? That's the thing about having a team. You know, if you don't have, um, let's say like a network or something like that, who's gonna give you this stuff and they already have a team of their own for you to use, which I think some YouTubers have situations like that. Don't quote me on that. But where am I gonna find an editor I can trust who gets my, my comedy? They don't understand, if they don't understand my comedy, I don't really want that person to edit for me because they don't get what parts to leave in, what's funny, and then you kind of feel anal about that. Then how much are you gonna charge me? I'm not making crazy amounts of money on YouTube. Personally, I'm just letting y'all know. I, you know, I make a good amount to get by, but you know, that's out of my budget. I have to factor in paying an editor who I'm not sure if they're even gonna do what it is that I wanna do. And then I don't have a managerial person to help me find said editor. You know what I mean? So you kind of find yourself in this weird rat race. It's like a ring around a rosy, you know? I want to do this, but I can't because of that. And it's just a domino effect of reasons why you think or why I feel I can't accomplish all of this stuff at the same time. That is how I felt in the past. So as of lately, I've, you know, again, me and Miss Rosh Posh, we talk about this stuff. I'd say to her, like, honestly, I don't care anymore. 
And what I mean by that is that I'm not gonna worry about what people think. I'm not gonna worry about what I have or what I don't have. I don't wanna, you know, keep thinking about that. And I don't wanna compare myself to other YouTubers, you know? I'm just going to post my bloody vlogs. That's what I'm gonna do until something else comes up. You get what I'm saying? I've encouraged myself to just find that confidence to post my content as often as possible because I've seen some pretty boring vlogs out there. <laughs> and they ain't doing much. They, they just be boiling water in the stove for the kitchen. And I'm like, what? If they believe in themselves enough to just um, sit down and look at the clouds for a vlog, well, gosh dang it, I can do the dang same thing, but better. So, you know, it comes down to self-belief. I know it sounds so cliche and corny, but it's actually self-belief. Like, if you don't believe in yourself, no one's gonna believe in you in real life. And it shows when you don't believe in yourself. And I feel like it's been reflective in my content, in my videos, in my consistency, that I've had issues in believing in myself because I'm always feeling like people want more of something that I don't have. But then a lot of people are also satisfied with what I do have. So I don't want to concentrate on the, the negativity, what I don't have, you know, I'm just going to be consistent and post these bloody vlogs. Okay. So that's what I've been doing lately. And, um, I'm sure once my consistency picks up, my viewers will be able to depend on my content and watch it in a timely manner. Right? So, uh, that's what I've been focusing on lately. Uh, I don't really have anything else to say. Um, just comment down below what you think. Um, yeah, and for those of you who want to start a YouTube channel, those are the things you have to think about, right? And I always encourage anyone who asks me about it, what are you going to do, A, that's different? Because right now I kind of feel YouTube is oversaturated. There's a lot of people doing um, the same things, which you can kind of fall between the cracks when you're kind of doing the same thing. So it would be nice to kind of find a niche, find something different, or just make sure your personality comes through no matter what it is you choose to do. And are you gonna be doing what you do because you like doing it or because it has the potential to make money? Which there's nothing wrong with doing something to make money. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. A lot of us do the things we do because it's beneficial, like go to work or work in certain places that we don't really want to work at, but damn, it pays the bills, so you gotta work there, right? But there's nothing wrong with trying to make another source of income, and if it's a YouTube channel you choose to do, that's perfectly fine. But the point I wanna make is, are you gonna be able to post your stuff and not care about the income when it doesn't come in? Because it's not gonna come in for a while, right? So are you comfortable putting hard work into a video every week and posting the video and not getting paid? As long as you're comfortable with that, you will make it far. You're gonna make it. But once you can accept that and commit to that, you'll be fine. <sighs> I feel like I've gotten a lot off my chest. Even starting this video, I was like, ooh, where am I gonna start? Like, this is awkward. But it actually came out quite all right. I feel like I said everything I wanted to say and I know I talk very fast because I don't like to waste time. That's another thing about me. I don't like to waste time. I'm very, very fast. And because I'm so fast, you know, I overlook details and sometimes I make mistakes, you know, because I'm trying to be so fast. I don't like wasting time, you know? So that's the other thing about me. It gives me anxiety when the day goes by and I don't feel accomplished. And then it just makes me feel, I want to say depressed, but it makes me feel depressed. <laughs> Definitely take your time. Don't be like me. You know, think about what you're doing and once you decide what it is what you want to do, stick to it, you know? That's what I have to say. Okay guys, I'm gone now. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any more questions about different topics, leave them down below because I definitely want to chit chat with you guys. And yeah, maybe I'll make more sit down videos in the future. But for now, I'm gonna sign off. I'm going to Tampa Bay today. Not Bay, Tampa. Tampa, Florida. So um, that's where I'll be headed. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed and I'll see you next time. Love you, bye.